Hello, I'm back. Whether you like it or not, I'm back with another pickup video. Yes, it's another bundle uh, ordered fresh from the press from Retro Tendo. Uh, I'll put the link below to his Facebook page. He has since changed his name, uh, but I'll still refer to him as Retro Tendo. But first, Primark are doing a range of, you know, nostalgic retro clothing. Uh, along with the t-shirt that I'm since wearing <clears throat> They're also doing socks now these socks are aimed at kids But they'll fit me size 6 to 8. I'm a size 8. So Anyhow these socks are aimed at kids that have probably never seen or heard any of these shows thus Rugrats um, Cat dog Hey Arnold Ren and Stimpy and the the uh, the uh, the uh, I forgot the names. Ah, uh, the, 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 yes, those. Oh, what the uh, the, um, the the wild thornberries. They're the ones. Yes, the very nostalgic uh, throwback socks. Um, so let's take out a pair, and I'll I'll, I'll go for Ren and Stimpy. I'll go for Ren and Stimpy. Here we have. How cool are those socks? But they're aimed at kids. Kids that have probably never even heard of the shows. Thus. Um, but apparently Rugrats is getting a reboot. Uh, but yeah, um, quite nice. A uh, little bit of attire. So that's that. But we're not about that. Excuse me. This video is the replacement boxes for N64 and Super Nintendo. If, like I said, if you want to place any orders, below is the link. So, the video, the video, <laughs> the boxes are as follows. We have Mischief Makers. Mischief Makers was the classic platformer 2.5D um that was one of the few games that used the D-pad. Shake, shake. Uh, let me just show the side. But they are really high quality boxes. These, um, I've got to say, if you're interested in getting any replacement boxes, modern boxes, and you're not a reseller like myself, I like it for um, aesthetic purposes. Then please don't hesitate to contact him. Bugs Life, a uh, bit of a poorly rated, poorly received game uh, during the period of when this came out. Uh, that's the side. <laughs> um, it wasn't terrible. This one, on the other hand, was quite a good platformer. Uh, the price of this game is Increasing ever so slightly. Tarzan. And there's the back. And we can see. And then I'll show you the side. Like I say, the quality is top notch. And like I've said before, if you notice, the first party titles tend to come with this black band, which I mentioned in a previous video. And then you've noticed on the pre the ones I've just shown, the third party ones tend to come with just a full image and a band. Don't know if anybody's ever noticed that. And then you'll get some which I was just being dis I was discussing the other week with Retro Tendo regarding the um, differences in card. Uh, Quake Two, Quake Three, Doom, um, Body Harvest. They all tend to have a really glossy, uh, inferior quality cardboard almost. Uh, for when you know the initial initial release when they, when they first came out So he's looking into finding a cardboard that matches That box uh, which I think is really good. It's a really good nice. It's a nice touch uh, Micro machines and There we go. Oh, oh yep and the back <clears throat> uh, The next one is Beetle Adventure Racing, another third-party title. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Which is one of the uh, 
only driving games that I could actually play with a steering wheel. It's very responsive. It's a very, very underrated, but yet a very good uh, driving simulator, almost. It's, it's a pick up and play. It's a really good one. If you've never played this before, oh yeah, there's the side piece there as well. I think I showed that one. Uh, it's a really good pick up and play driving game, along like, you know, Mario Kart, obviously. Um, stay clear of South Park Rally. It's an atrocious game. It is. It really is. Uh, Multiversing Champions, these Roadsters, uh, a couple like that. They're very um, quick and easy. Uh, there wasn't long games. Um, what was the other ones? You got, uh, yeah, Multiversing Champions, Roadsters. What was the other one? Five hours later. Um, Top Gear Rally. Top Gear Overdrive, and then there was a, there was a, a motorbike version. I forgot the name of it. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, going back uh, again, third party titles, banding, image. Uh, what I um, there were a couple of games that were released. This wasn't. I don't think this was one of them. Where the actual uh, the certificate, and I do believe. Um, Mortal Kombat and possibly Quake or even Doom was one of them where it was literally just stuck on. It wasn't actually, uh, it was an addition to the box, uh, probably at the end of the production line because some of them were sideways, straight on, upside down, they were all over the place. There wasn't uh, a particular way that they placed them on. Uh, but I think uh, such as June Nukem, it was, it was actually placed on the box. Little things like that that uh, you, you know, as a, as a retro gamer, should notice. Uh, yes, summer, is it summer games? I was going to say, tra yeah, it's track and field. Um, a friend of mine, uh, we used to, oh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. We used to play this religiously, and um, it's nice to see the original, if you see, can you see that? The official Nintendo magazine, which is now defunct in the UK, but I do believe it's still uh, been published over in the rest of Europe. Don't know why, but yes, uh, as reviewed by the, uh, it was uh, got the awesome rating. Yes, going back, um, yeah, I, I I used to get accused of cheating on this. The actual game, if you if you actually cheat on the game, it comes up with a yellow band saying cheating. You are cheating. Uh, well, in fact, I. Used to roll a piece of paper up, bend it around my finger, and then the A and B buttons. I used to go like that, so it didn't burn my finger and get a blister. Uh huh. Uh, I never melted the buttons though, but uh, because I was so quick, it actually used to come up um, cheating. So yeah, bear there, man. Give it a go, and uh, it will pop up. You shall, you shall see it. Another official title by um, well, it, well, say it's first party. Uh, it's obviously so. Uh, Namco, there you go, uh, it does say there Namco, even though it's Nintendo based around the uh, rim, it's saying it's first party, well Namco quite, yeah, possibly our first party uh, company. Uh, this was a culmination of, I do believe, most of the first and second Ridge Racer games combined into one one game. It was a, a unique version, so I am led to believe. Uh, it was all right. The collision detection was a little bit off, so when you hit, you literally stop dead. Um, I went to the European Computer Trade Show. I do have a video which I am planning on converting and putting out on YouTube, so you can see back in 1999 all these wonderful games in, in their former glory, um, pre-production actually. Um, there's a couple of little uh, unreleased ones on there as well. Uh, but Ridge Racer. Uh, in its infancy, it wasn't the greatest then, and it possibly isn't the greatest now. Like I said, pick up and play driving games, Ridge Racer wasn't one of the greatest titles, but it's still a nice bit of a throwback to uh, driving games. Right, enough of that. We're rambling on there. We're on to the Super Nintendo now. Uh, so we've got Stunt Racer FX. Yeah! Which, for me, was one of the, another good pick-up-and-play driving game. This one, 
Now, for some reason, I, I was led to believe this didn't come out in the UK. Because uh, I have a, I do believe it's a Spanish or some uh, Spanish speaking version. Which, uh, but this is the PAL region box. Uh, there's no, uh, the writing on the back is in English. So maybe I was confused. I don't know. I probably got it wrong. Another absolute of a game this is a fantastic game it's so difficult to finish you need cheat codes to finish it uh maybe that's just me but me and uh, friends when i was a, a youth used to play this on many occasions and we have never ever finished it without putting a cheat code in uh so that's super smash tv i prefer the snes one to the mega drive that's just my preference uh next we have the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. Is this one with the fireman? No, this is not the one with the fireman. I never get. Oh, is this the second one? This is the second one. Uh, this was the two, number two in the series, and I do believe the third one uh, didn't come out in the UK. It was a Japanese only. So if you're after the third one, you're going to have to get the Japanese one. This one, I believe, was the first one. If I remember correctly, use mode seven really, really well on this game, especially on the uh, rotating uh, tower that you climb up. Uh, the PlayStation version and this one are very, very close in um, visually. Uh, there were obviously some differences, and I do believe the PlayStation version had two extra levels, maybe three. I'm not sure, uh, but this one, if you've never played it, please, for God's sake. Get out of the cave and play this. It's a gem of a game. Um, back when, yes, back when Sony <laughs> used to publish um, games or make them. Anywho, next we have Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Well, it's not Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That's the that's the Mega Drive one, isn't it? Uh, but that is the this is the SNES one. Zombies, and I do believe. They made a sequel to this. It's, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But I don't think it came out on the SNES. I think it came out on the Mega Drive. So there we go. Let's see this side there. I'm not going to bore you with the inserts. Uh, this one, massively underrated. It's a very short game. It's a good game. Uh, but if you haven't played it, and visually it looks really, really nice uh, on screen. It's Pinocchio. It was uh, like, it was, is it? Virgin Interactive, who uh, obviously programmed the game and then did it with Disney, uh, Disney Interactive, but it was published by Virgin. Uh, but another another cracking Disney game. Um, so please, if you ever if you find this cheap enough, pick it up. I think I paid a tenner for mine. Uh, On to some American ones now. This is uh, yeah, Superman X Men. Um, Arcade Revenge, yes, it is. You see, this is... LJN used to get slated for games, and they still do to this day. Angry Video Game Nerd always slates them, but this is probably one of their finest games that they made. Maybe I'm wrong. I know it's a very difficult game, and same again, if you haven't got the cheat codes, you're never going to finish it. It's so ridiculously hard. Uh, but visually, it's... And, and the, the music on this is spot on. It's really, really good. Um, you know, it's got a... What's the word? A good soundtrack. That's the one. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, Final Fight. Yes. And I prefer... I don't know if it's just me, but you guys, if you want to comment, but uh, please tell me what you prefer. This one or the PAL version. Or even the Japanese version. I did like the Japanese version. But the PAL version box was so much better than this. It's just that... Final fight. Just a big band. Yeah, yeah, we get that. But, you know, it's one of the most basic fonts. Yeah, but yeah, that's the... Uh, there's not much to see on that, really. It's just pretty It's pretty dull, actually. I mean, there's a little bit going off on there with some image work, imagery. Imagery! Uh, but this one was quite... Uh, Plain. Next one is yeah, Superstar Wars. 
what an absolute corker of a game again it's such a difficult one uh, you can't really finish it without cheating you can uh, if you're goddamn good uh, but I like the fact that we're a bit of a mixture you've got like um, 3d roaming at levels you've got the trench pit uh, trench trench pit the trench run uh, side scrolling part you're a bit of a mixture of everything as was the uh, NES Nintendo NES NES whatever you want to call it whatever people call it around the globe uh, NES and SNES for me but uh, the Star Wars on the NES was uh, quite a good one as well. And this one, which uh, Games and Movies of Sheffield, I picked up this game uh, the other year. But I didn't get it complete. But now I have the box. I can't go denchu ding jung jung jung. I can't pronounce. I really can't. It's just Go64. It's literally a train simulator game. So much fun. But to get the full effect you need this controller for one uh, uh, viewer out there there we go there's your close-up that's the close-up of the quality of the uh, the boxes but yeah uh, go 64 a train simulator game for all those train fanatics out there yes they still make that in the arcades as well and I believe that's it uh, on the boxes but yes absolutely amazing quality um i mean it, he literally and when i say the i don't use this word lightly he slaves over these he really does he puts his heart and soul into making these boxes uh, <clears throat> and <clears throat> might i say i'll just i'll go through these as well you've got the inners um, so, you know, yeah, wait a minute, and even, where is it, where is it, I've just seen it, I've just seen one, there we go, he even makes, yes, makes the trays, he physically makes the trays, not to mention, he's custom made the uh, Japanese um, box insert as well because obviously, dimension wise, they are so much different. Can't really see size wise, but they are so much different in size, box wise, and width, dimensions, everything. I think the depth, I'm just get a uh, N64 one. I think the depth of the box is identical. No, it might be slightly, slightly different. No, the depths are absolutely fine. It's the actual length of the box, which, as you can see, is ever so slightly longer. So the inserts are different, so to speak. Um, so yeah, a custom-made inner for the Japanese tray as well. Uh, very talented man and like I say uh, for reproduction purposes and obviously if you're not a reseller then this is the way to go to make your collection look absolutely like a, I, I don't want to say the word but yes it looks fantastic um, you can't really see they're just hiding there there uh, but yes uh, if you are interested in purchasing some of these then please hop along uh, give him a like check out his Facebook page and uh, yeah if, if that's what you want and that's what you like then please go ahead and order uh, thank you for putting up with me rambling if you've watched this video so far um, I don't know if you've been on to uh, Freeman Family's Productions they're also a YouTube channel where i collaborated on there doing some um voices he is a channel where you he does um impersonations he does reviews on films and i was uh, the first guest believe it or not to do uh, impersonations we challenged each other to do five i chose five he chose five and i did my rendition so if you want to hop over on his channel i'll put the link below give him some love uh so yeah 
that's that. Uh, but yes, thank you ever so much, all 20 of you, for coming and viewing my uh, pickup of these wonderful, and I don't use that word lightly, they are absolutely amazing boxes. Uh, yes, they're just boxes, but to me, they are a work of art, as I always say. Uh, they're absolutely sublime. They are beautiful. Let me just get a nice close up there for you. So yes, as I always say, love life and keep gaming. Yeah.